Oh man, I had a really busy June. You know, a lot of the times when experts, nutritionists like myself, give advice about healthy eating and healthy living, a lot of it does assume that you have some base level of time available to put into it. And trust me, it is worth it when you do have the time. But there are those times, those days, those weeks, those months, where we just don't have the time to put into it. Those times when there's so much going on and whether it's super awesome and exciting or whether it's stressful, it can be overwhelming and we can sometimes feel like we're just struggling to keep our heads above water, that we're almost drowning in whatever it is we have going on in our lives, particularly if it's something stressful, but even if it's something amazing, when it gets to be too much that you can't take care of your basic needs, it gets to be a struggle. And, you know, obviously those of us who are fortunate enough to have those struggles be from a positive thing are lucky. And personally, I feel so grateful for everything that I have in my life. But June was a super busy month. So I don't know if anybody noticed, but I actually didn't post a video for two weeks because I was just that busy. And, you know, when when you only have 10 minutes to try to shove some food into your mouth to keep you going for the rest of the day, um, when you don't have time to do laundry, when you don't have time to wash your hair, um, you, know, you know, things start to slide to the most essential priorities. And so what I did is, because I always like to keep in touch regardless, I sent a note out to my email subscribers and basically told them that, like, listen, June is super hectic for me. Um, and we all go through these periods of time where we feel like we're in survival mode. And so I asked my subscribers if they had some tips to share that I would share them more broadly and I'd also add some of my own tips. So I got some really great responses from a ton of people. Um, first of all, I just want to say a big thank you to all of my email subscribers for the number of people who thanked me for my hard work over the years, who appreciate how much I put into this and who wanted me to know how much of a difference I've made in their lives, and that means the world to me. I mean, that motivates me to keep doing this work, even though I have other things going on in my life that are keeping me super, super busy. Um, you guys are the reason that I keep coming back to this, so thank you for that. From the bottom of my heart, really, thank you. So I wanted to share a few notes that I found particularly uh, interesting, helpful, that I thought might be interesting, helpful for you. Judy says, hi Heather, I do yoga daily to keep my head above water. So awesome. I love when I'm able to do yoga daily. And there's an amazing website, yogadownload.com, where you can download free 20 minute audio yoga sessions, which I find the easiest way to make sure I keep yoga in my life on a regular basis. Peggy says, keeping fresh fruit and melons on the counter to snack on. Wish there was some way to suspend them in the air just in front of the fridge so when I'm on autopilot, I can grab fruit instead of hitting the fridge for something I'll regret later. First of all, cut up melon sounds so awesome. And great idea for you to keep it on hand so that you have that delicious, refreshing melon available to you. Um, and you don't have to think about what you're going to snack on. Another idea um, that I do sometimes is I put grapes in the freezer and then they, they keep for a long time, and also they make little like single serving <laughs> popsicles. Uh, Sandy says, June is also my survival month. I, I heard from a lot of people who were having really, really busy June. Um, so Sandy says, I try to keep my exercise routine even though I'm tired or exhausted. I get up early and walk five days a week, and the other two days I try to get to work early to put in a few extra hours. I can get a lot done early in the morning when most people are still sleeping, which I find a great idea. A, to get the morning exercise, B, to not feel like you have to do that every single morning, because sometimes we get caught up in this cycle of, you know, trying to do the same thing every day, which is lovely, because then you get in the habit, and then you don't have to think about it, you don't have to decide to do it, you just do it. But I also like the idea of getting to work and getting some stuff done 
before anybody else is awake, which of course minimizes distractions. I find in my own life, personally, that it's really difficult when I go to visit my family on the West Coast in Pacific time, because they're three hours behind Eastern time. And so you can already start to feel behind right when you wake up, because if you check your email, if you check your social media, everybody's been going for three hours. You've got a ton of stuff in your inbox, and you just feel like you're catching up. So um, being able to take a bit of time in the morning, and whether that means getting up early or whether that means just not checking your email or your social media for a few hours before, until you get some things done can be really, really helpful. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, Maria says, when I'm in survival mode, I do two things. One, I take the time to sit and enjoy my favorite breakfast, which is oatmeal with peanut butter, raisins, cocoa powder, and banana, which sounds so good. Yummy choice, Maria. And two, I exercise outside every day. At some point, I sit for five minutes, breathing deeply and enjoying nature. It really helps. Love that. Getting outside is one of my favorite things as well. And it can be so calming, can't it? Uh, Jessica says, what I do when I simply have more work to do than I can handle is, I just got a list going, so she's obviously a list person. I like it. Acknowledge that not everything is going to get done, at least not right now. Prioritize in terms of importance and deadlines. Delegate. Drop things off my to-do list. I could really use some work on that one. Once I put something on my to-do list, it's really difficult to take it off, but I really like that approach. I'm going to work on that one. And sleep as much as my schedule allows. Jessica, I think that's awesome. I think that's a great breakdown of some amazing steps. Anne says, I'd say I've been living in overwhelm with chronic health conditions like pain, migraines, insomnia. Just reading daily emails can take hours a day, and I'm not a tech person or even enjoy staring at an iPhone or iPad. I had to stop exercising temporarily, and it's killing me, so to speak, as I like to move. I can say I'm trying to meditate more just to keep from overwhelm and to find balance. That's all I can add. Well, Anne, thank you for sharing that, because that is a very different perspective from the overwhelm that I was dealing with in June, which really was just a very positive time, but it was super busy. And so reading your story, your struggle, uh, gives a very different perspective to what we think about when we're dealing with overwhelm, when we're, when we're just struggling to keep our head above water. And that chronic pain, chronic migraines can be so difficult. So I'm really sorry that you're struggling with that. Um, and I love your meditation idea because that's something that I've been trying to work on more. And it's a great one for people who are not able to exercise to still spend some time reflecting and tuning in with their body. Um, and hopefully that's helping you. It sounds like it's, um, it's helping you find a little bit of balance in your life. And hopefully that can only expand as you get more into that. Um, and I am going to use that as inspiration for myself to make meditation a priority in my life. Uh, Sharon, I love this note. What I am reminding myself during this time of much struggle is, even though it sounds ridiculous, I am not in prison. I have choices, I have a good career. Even though keeping all of those at the forefront can be really hard without freaking out or not being able to focus. But I'm grateful for those things, and I know very well not everyone has them. So what I do is keep up my regular fitness stuff, gym and yoga all the time, which I don't want to skip and I look forward to. If I'm feeling horrible, I go through the motions anyway and take the long way home after. Never a waste of time for fitness or yoga. Such a great point um, that you can always find time to fit in some little bit of activity, even if it's just taking the long way uh, walking home. Um, and what I really love is the choices, because that was really, um, f for me, for June, my, my busy time was really a choice. I was very busy with various projects, um, some not related to nutrition, some were related to launching my book, which I told you about last week, uh, Protein from Plants, which I'm super, super excited about, super thrilled to see how much people are enjoying it so far. Um, but yeah, we have choices. and. We can choose in each moment whether 
we are going to experience and enjoy what we're doing or if we're going to feel super stressed out about it. And sometimes it's impossible to step outside of the situation and choose. But the more we consciously try, the, the more the chances are that we'll be able to. Um, and going back to Anne's story previously, obviously, uh, chronic health conditions are an exception to that. But, um, but in terms of, you know, just your average feeling overwhelmed, um, those kinds of things, we, we do have a choice. And it's, I think it's great to feel grateful. <laughs> that came out funny. Um, but that's another thing I've been trying to do lately is practice gratitude. So just writing each day something in my diary that I'm grateful for. Uh, Steven says, I listen to music a lot during the day. <laughs> that seems to be my go-to. Same. Uh, sometimes, though, I find that music can, certain music can get me, you know, too feeling on edge. And so I have different playlists that I use depending on how I'm feeling. Um, let's see. Last one from Ed that I will read today, although I had tons of great ones. And again, thank you so much. Ed says, Heather, I usually do one of several things. One, take time off from work and don't look back, which is awesome if you can do it. I am planning to do that in August. <laughs> Two, go to the local bookstore and grab a book off the shelf, get a coffee and maybe an oatmeal raisin cookie, and then sit, read, relax, and enjoy the time. So lovely. Three, find a quiet place and pray for others who've crossed my path with a need. Perhaps Anne, with her chronic uh, pain and migraines. Uh, four, go visit a friend. Love that. Five, spend time with a relative. My closest granddaughter happens to live right next door and is only two years old, but such a joy to be with and help teach life lessons, especially at this age. So, so lovely. I love that. It's super cute. Six, go see a movie. One of my go-tos. Uh, seven, go for a walk while listening to one of the many videos, audios related to plant-based eating out on the internet. Thank you, Ed. That is a super list. Um, I would add to the videos, audios related to plants, plant-based eating, podcasts, such an easy way to kind of get outside your own head and your own experiences and listen to others. I really love Radio Lab. That's one of my favorite podcasts. I've also really gotten into Beautiful Anonymous, which is a really cool one. Um, those, neither of those are related to healthy eating in any way, but because my life is so centered around nutrition and veganism, um, I like to listen to stuff outside that realm. Okay. So those are some of the amazing stories that I got and tips, and I wanted to share a few of mine. So one, I've been turning my phone on silent whenever I can, which is so good. Just not hearing those notifications. Uh, making lists, which I seem to have in common with a lot of my email subscribers. They were all about the lists. A few food-related things, because obviously I do want to share some strategies for survival techniques to do with food. So we don't always have time to make everything from scratch. I don't always have time to make everything from scratch. I love sharing recipes with you that show you how to do that as easily as possible, but definitely recognize that sometimes when we're in survival mode, all we can do is get something to go. And what I do in those cases is I have my go-to places that make good sandwiches and wraps to go. By good, I mean healthy, filling so they last me through the day because as I said if I only get 10 minutes to get some food in my mouth it needs to be filling uh, and tasty. So I do this a lot with my clients that you know I don't always work with people who have unlimited amounts of time to make food for themselves obviously because how many of us are there out there really? Um, even myself I, I don't always have time to do all of that so I like working where people are at and showing them how to make things work with their life, with their schedule. Um, some other things you can do, uh, have go-to meals. So if I get home after a long day and I have the food in my fridge that I want, I can throw together a meal in like 10 minutes because I've gotten to know, you know, how many, like maybe five or so meals that I can make without thinking on autopilot and just throw together really, really quickly. I also use quick cooking foods like couscous, quinoa, raw vegetables, um, stuff like that. Or I might get some like Eden Organic, make some really nice soups or 
uh, beans and rice that are pre-made, so pre-cooked and seasoned so that you can pair that with some fresh vegetables. That's usually what I do is I would pair something that's prepared healthfully and pair, pair it with some, with some fresh vegetables. Um, morning exercise is my standard go-to. I find it much easier to get the exercise in, in the morning. When I get to the end of the day, I'm usually pretty tired, usually pretty hungry, so it's hard to uh, exercise before eating dinner. Um, but sometimes I recognize that I need just a lazy morning. Or sometimes I recognize that it would serve me better to just get to work, get some stuff done. So I try to do morning exercise, but also recognize when it doesn't work with my day. Similarly, some days I like to go long and work you know, all through the evening to try to catch up on things a bit. But then other days, I don't at all. Other days, at a normal end of work time, I just shut everything down, take some time out, just relax and chill out. A saying that I picked up, I forget where, someone's webinar, I think, um, was to remember that because my brain is constantly creating ideas, because I'm creative person. I cannot possibly do everything I want to do and definitely not all at once and usually not all in, in the day that I want to do it. So recognizing that um, is a good step in acknowledging like, um, like Jessica said, acknowledge that not everything is going to get done, at least not right now. So the next step of that <laughs> is going to be taking her suggestion of dropping things off my to-do list. Um, and along the lines of what Sharon said, Remembering that my choices are mine and I can choose to enjoy even the busiest times because I'm a very lucky person. I'm very grateful for everything that I have in my life. I can choose to enjoy even when I am so, so busy that I barely have time to think I'm still enjoying myself. So that is a very lucky thing to have in my life. I am super, super grateful for everything that I have for every one of you watching this today. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. And sometimes, of course, the best thing is to just take two seconds and have a really deep breath. The breath out <laughs> is often the more important one for me to remember, that release. So, hopefully something in there was helpful for you. Hope you're not stuck in survival mode, and if you are, hopefully something in there can, can help you break out just even just a little bit for today. Otherwise, hope you're having a wonderful day. If you want to get in on more personal updates from me, you can sign up for my email list down below. Thank you so, so much for watching, and we'll talk soon. Bye, guys.